All right, now we do have Jane on standby in Lusaka. She's got more details on what's happening in Zambia with regard to the elections. And also in studio, we have political analyst Peter Kagwanja. He is here in our studio in Nairobi. We're looking broadly at elections across the continent this year. But we'll begin with Zambia and let's move to Jane in Lusaka. Jane, give us the latest from the ground there. What's happening with the voting protest process and when are we expecting to see those polls close today? Well, for me, that the polls are due to officially close at 6 p.m. local time. That's in just about seven hours' time. But it may not be the case because up until a couple of minutes ago, it was raining heavily. It's actually been raining very heavily since, uh, for the better part of this morning, since the polling began. And we do know that there are some areas there were delays, especially in the western, eastern, and northeastern regions, where at least 22 polling stations have been affected, according to the Electoral Commission. They say that those areas did not get their voting materials on time there were delays because the roads were impassable they had to hire choppers to deliver this material so we certainly expect some delays in some area but right now we are in central lusaka at kabulongo primary school uh, where so far so good voting appears to be going on smoothly in fact at the moment the leading opposition candidate hakinde hichilema is actually voting at this building behind me and one of his calls was he was ready he says he actually spoke to us before he went in and said that he's ready to accept the poll uh, the results if they are free and fair of course hakilema uh, ha Rather, Hakainde is uh, Edgar Lungu's biggest challenger. That's the ruling party candidate. And many analysts believe, uh, predict that it's going to be a, an election that's going to be clo too close to call between the two candidates uh, from the ruling party and the main opposition party. But uh, that said, uh, Famida, here at Lus uh, at Lus in central Lusaka, the polling appears to smoothly and it's basically an election that's uh, widely seen in other parts of Africa where voters are only required to come in with their voters card and their national ID and their names are set to be uh, are, are just uh, verified in the register and it's a process that's taking about three minutes for Mida. All right Jane just hang on for us a moment we're going to speak to Peter here in our Nairobi studios. If if you look at the circumstances leading up to these polls of course Zambia going to election because President Michael Sata passed away. And there were some issues around transparency at that time. The Zambian government not saying very much about how sick he was, and then even a slight delay in the announcement of his death. Does this talk to an issue around a lack of transparency in governments? In a sense, the issue of uh, ailments uh, among the leadership of Africa is sometimes uh, crowded with uh, secrecies, uh, not necessarily because of lack of transparency as such, but uh, the, the consequences of the same on the national stability or feeling of stability. Uh, so uh, particularly uh, the, 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 the tendency to kick, to kick off uh, succession struggles within the political parties, both the ruling and the opposition. So that's why most parties prefer to keep it secret so that they can manage the transition. Uh, and as you have indicated, even when such leaders pass on, they tend also to not disclose it immediately. And long before Sata, his, uh, his, um, the other leader also passed on, and it was also delayed for a while. Uh, he even stayed abroad for a while in order to, I would argue, uh, to give the country time to, to, to organize some form of transition. Yeah, the gap here is that uh, succession in Africa, the question of succession in Africa is still the lingering issue. Uh, whether you are looking at Cote d'Ivoire, I mean uh, uh, Burkina Faso and the crisis that it has had, or now Zambia uh, in terms of election, uh, the question of transition from one regime to another or even within the regime is a very, very uh, risky issue. All right. Jane, what are they saying in Lusaka regarding observers of this election? Who is there to observe and what are they saying so far? You have explained there are already some delays in terms of voting material, largely due to weather. What are observers saying? 
Well, so far I've seen a couple of observers from the African Union, uh, SADC, the Commonwealth, and uh, a couple of uh, independent monitors from one group called, like I spoke to one group called the Christian Churches Monitors, and they told me they've been to several polling stations. Say for the delays in some of these areas in the western, northeastern, and eastern regions, here in the capital they were telling me they were satisfied with the process at the moment. Remember, we still have a long way to go, but they said the process was a bit slow, largely because of of the rainfall it is the rainy season right now but remember for me that we still have about seven hours to go and anything could happen and this is one of the closely contested presidential election elections in zambia's history we've got about 11 candidates vying for that post they're going to be and whoever is chosen is going to be president for the next 18 months largely because the next general elections are due in 2016 but like i said the two main candidates are the uh, other ruling parties edgar lungu who is the defense minister in the later uh, Michael Sata's government. And then we've got uh, Hakainde Hichilema, who is the main opposition pa party candidate uh, from the United Party of National Developing Development, who is promising a new beginning in Zambia. He says he is an economist by profession, and that's what some Zambians believe the country needs at the moment. But on the other hand, we've got Edgar Lungu, who was actually chosen by the late uh, Michael Sata to step in for him when he went for treatment in London before he died. And he sort of says in his last interview, he said that was his endorsement to the presidency. But at the end of the day, it's now up to 5 million Zambian voters to decide who is going to be their president for the next 18 months. All right, Jane, thanks very much for that update. We'll leave it there for the moment. We're speaking there to Jane Kyo in Lusaka. Now, Peter, one of the other nations on the continent going to the polls and a very big focus on this is Nigeria next month. But this is also this comes amid a massive security crisis. Some politicians have been accused of ignoring that crisis, focusing rather on election electioneering instead of that threat. What's your take on that? Uh, I think Nigeria has a has a very uh, steep crime crimeing to do uh, because of Boko Haram. Uh, three quarter, I mean, the, the whole of northeastern uh, part of that country. Uh, is unlikely to have what you can call a free and fair election because first there is massive di displacement in the country. Uh, one has to find out how the displaced are going to vote. Two, the, 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 there is the threat of disruption of that election by Boko Haram militias uh, in, in areas they control. Remember, in areas like Bono, they, they, they have virtual control over the territory. So uh, it is important to uh, focus on how this security, I mean, uh, election is going to be secured from terrorism. And, and in that regard, I think uh, giving a blind eye to the security dimensions of Nigerian elections is, is, will be a great mistake. Uh, it is not business as usual. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. So much to discuss, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. We're speaking there to political analyst Peter Kakwanja joining us here in Nairobi.